Thanks for tuning in to the Loser Kid Pinball Podcast. This is episode 145. It's a brand new day. I am Josh Roop. With me, my co-captain, as always. Scott Larson. And Scott, it is, it's a wonderful day. It's it's new pinball day, right? Okay, this this is like one of those things where it's it's quiet, quiet, quiet. And then, hey, let's uh, hit you with an avalanche. Exactly. And the response to this game has been insane. We're obviously talking about X-Men. But we okay, can also be talking about wait, Avatar. Wait, wait. We got what? two. We got two. Yeah. And so if we're if you're going to buy that game, you know, the best place to buy it from is flipping out pinball from Zach and Nicole Many with Greg Bone as the tech support. They will get you taken care of. And when you buy a product, I know you're buying a pinball machine, but honestly, you want great customer service to back that product because in a perfect world, we wouldn't need to fix these machines, but we don't live in a perfect world. And Zach and Nicole and Greg will get you taken care of from all the way from diagnosis all the way up to getting your part re- repaired and replaced, all under warranty. They do fantastic work. And I mean, the Haggis situation should should give you an idea of how much their word means to their customers. So check them out, flippingoutpinball.com. Get your X-Men, get your avatar through them. Right, Absolutely. Scott? Absolutely. Yes. Okay, so... What do you want to talk about first? I, oh, I, I would I would argue let's talk about Avatar because it's just a teaser. So right now, yeah. we we basically know that Avatar is the theme that Jersey Jack yep. is going to be pushing, and yep. we have little snippets of this. So the, yeah, look, yes, yeah, so, but we so Avatar. we have less information on that. And I want to do a, a deeper dive on Avatar when the game is revealed in probably two weeks or so. Before you do that, though, I want to I want to hurry and give us a plug. We're both wearing our hockey Whoa, jerseys. Hockey. Yeah, you're wearing the black one. I'm wearing the white one. Yep. These things are comfortable. They're nice and big. Dude, I'm loving this. Like, you could wear a hoodie underneath. I, I got mm-hmm. extra large. It's very baggy. But you could it, put a hun- hoodie underneath this, stay warm. I, I will you- also point out, I was concerned because a lot of times when you get a uh, hockey uh, sweater, they're called sweaters, okay. but um, they, they tend to be really thick and really yeah. heavy and warm. These are light. And yep, I do light. like that where it feels like, you know, when you go to the pinball shows, and you're wearing things around, I tend to get really hot because all of the games and everything like that. This is very cool, very comfortable. And yes, it is baggy like a hockey sweater is. So it it looks great. And I I love both of the styles. I have your style, too. I just didn't wear it tonight. Yeah, I've got the other one as well. I got got the wrong size, but they're getting it taken care of. There so. you go. There you go. But uh, uh, yeah, and uh, I think we got one for Keith Ellen's going to be going out soon. Yep. And yep. Uh, Shane told he didn't get a hockey jersey. He got a loser kid attacks shirt. But man, yep. hey, they're both good. Him, both good. Yeah, great. Great stuff. If you want to check that out, silverballswag.com slash loser kid. So let's talk Avatar. Battle for Pandora. Really, we don't have a ton to go off. It's been not been much. teased for like a week now yep. with leaked. If you can't see me, if you're not watching YouTube, <laughs> using air wink, quotes, wink, wink, yeah. leaked photos. Uh, what do you think of this approach? You know, okay, actually, yes, uh, <laughs> yes. Okay, well, okay. Uh, how can I put this? This is something that has been done, right? And this yes. is what tends to be the go-to way, and it actually does work out a little better at teasing something, getting people to talk about it, and it does build momentum because yeah. what happens is, and I still remember. Back when I first got into pinball, uh, there was just a random, hey, here's Mustang. Yeah. And, and everyone, and, and, okay, this was before podcasting became a huge thing, before the little fan forums and everything, but it felt like, oh, Mustang, and oh, that's, okay, I, I've seen it. And it it really didn't move. And I know Mustang's not a huge theme unless you're a Mustang fan, right? Yeah, yep. But it did, uh, it did help out. You know, I just realized everything's so dark. Just a minute. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so we, we have new cameras, and so we're getting used to the new equipment. Yeah. Um, but this is a good way of people talking about it. I know that with the internet and all the interesting thing, the the negative things that the internet can bring, but also the positive things in that you can yes. find these niche forums in these fan areas. Where we can talk about these things. And this is one thing that is super beneficial about having it released now as opposed to 10 years ago. Yeah. Because people start talking about it. It's like, oh, what do you think about this? What do you think about the theme? What do you think about what's going on? And it does give you a little bit of a sense. 
Uh, here's w- w- what's your thought? Here's my concern. Okay, so Avatar, okay. I, I don't mind. Like I've seen the movie. I've seen the first one. I haven't seen the second one. But I think you and I had a discussion about this, and I actually did some research. Mm-hmm. And and Avatar holds the record for like most money made for a movie, right? It's over like yep. three billion dollars. It's ridiculous for the first well, movie. It, yeah, franchise or now is it still like the highest money making movie? Yes. Or so it was Endgame. It, didn't and Endgame then, beat it in the states, but so Avatar beat it, it worldwide. So what happened was, is Endgame beat it, and then they re released the oh. first one long enough to beat the record uh, i see I so see. avatar still is number okay. one and that's not including i know the second movie did over a billion dollars as well like it did really really mm-hmm. well post pandemic yeah we're, we're talking four billion dollars three okay let's let's conservative yeah, three billion dollars a lot of, a lot of money two for movies. a franchise a lot of yeah. money yeah i mean it took marvel like 23 movies to start well it took probably about 15 movies before it started getting in the billions right right okay so we have this movie that's made billions of dollars. Yeah, when was the last time you saw someone wearing an Avatar shirt? When was the last time you saw someone sporting yep. Avatar gear? And I did the research, and I don't. If this is like true, it kind of scares me. But the number, the figure I could find online was Avatar's made a hundred and fifty-three million dollars on gross profit for merchandise. Right. Any that idea is, how much Star Wars has made? That's nothing. That's nothing yeah, and, compared yeah. to. Four million okay. dollars for the movie. Exactly what I just said. Any idea how much Star Wars has made? Uh, millions yeah. or billions. Okay. Literally, George Lucas financed. He leveraged Empire Strikes Back based on selling toys. Makes sense. I, uh, he. Uh, th- this was way before they knew merchandising was going to be a thing, and certainly he, it's a lucky bet on his uh, on his standpoint. Yeah. But he got all the merchandising options from Star Wars. Dang. Lucky. And no one and, he didn't want to make any more movies. <laughs> right. So he got all the merchandising from that. And I I am the Star Wars generation. Star Wars came out when I was four. Okay. And so like this this was the thing for yeah. at least seven years. Everybody had a billion Star Wars toys. Yeah. So he was able to leverage that to finance. Uh, I, I don't know if he financed the whole thing of Empire Strikes Back or financed the gra- uh, the greatest deal. So that's why he got so much creative license to do what he did for yeah. Empire Strikes Back. Um, th- now, I, I know different times, right? Okay, the Star yeah, Wars was 1970. 79 was yeah. Empire Strikes Back. 77 yeah. was the yeah. original. 77. You know? So when yeah. you look at that versus now, you know, so when did the original Avatar come out? Like 2000. 2000- 10, 10, 9, yeah. 8, something like that. Because I know they've already done a, a game, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they've already done a game, 2009. And th- so it's been out there for a while. However, I don't know of something that has the same cultural impact that, uh, you know, and I know Star Wars, it, it's not totally fair because yeah. we're talking almost 50 years for Star Wars. Yeah. So. Sure. Uh, and it's a different time, different world, literally a different world with the interconnectivity of the internet and and different ways people can get get things. But is it possible to have the same sort of cultural impact that maybe a Star Wars did? And maybe that's unfair. I hey, we are we're gonna be talking about Marvel right now. So let's yeah. talk about does now Marvel had like 23 movies. And that's but, a problem though, too, because you bring that up, but Marvel's been around since the 50s, 50s, it, 60s. It ha- it has, but really the the original X-Men. Actually, yeah, the un- okay. uncanny. The, but before the, we transition to this, okay, so all right. what have you thought so far of just the just the teaser stuff? Okay. Because we we got a full teaser trailer today. Yeah. No, well, okay. I was mainly talking about just the 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 type of uh, merchant or what the cult type of theme impact, I guess. Yes. Yeah. So um, now you're going from a comic book that I read as a kid too, by the way, the whole teaser that jo- George Gomez talked about, that yeah. was me. Like I read, I was huge into comic books in the eighties and nineties and read this story. This is a great story. It is. So it, this is a perfect one to take. Now I'm glad he actually told us what the story was because I, even though I had read it, I had actually forgotten exactly where the Sentinels came in. Yeah. And it's, it's good to remind people because a lot of people now are only 
connected to the X-Men either through the X-Men 96 yeah. or they're connected or, um, or they're connected to uh, the, you know, the cartoon version or they're connected to the movies. Yeah. So th- this is a little different, but there's so much storyline. I'm glad he, he, he went through that now. Okay. Going back to avatar. Cause we are talking about avatar. Yeah. Avatar has two movies. They're big movies. Everybody saw them, but I, you're not giving the same sort of cultural impact. Yeah. So you have the first movie, which, which really, if you look at it from an analytical lens was kind of a, Hey, what these military people come into a foreign area and try to take resources or dominate them or what have you. It was very political at the time yeah. because the, you know, the U S was involved in the, you know, the Iraq war. Yeah. So there was certainly some of that with the second one you're getting, it's a little different in that go with me on this. Okay. I haven't seen it. So you're, this is all new to me. Go for okay. it. Okay. The second one was star Trek four and Titanic had a baby. Okay. Uh, because, I believe you. Because the, the second one is, Hey, there's these big mammal things that they're trying to wait, wait for it, kill and extract a small amount of essence so they can sell it for a lot of money. Sounds a lot like the first one don't you think, yeah. but now we are taking it to a new level of, Hey, we're doing an environmental theme where now we're killing a, uh, a you know, a, a being for it. Yeah. And the thing is it's a sentient being cause they have a connection with the Navi. So you have those two that are do it now visually. It's pretty amazing. It's awesome to see it in per- person. And if you go to Disney world, there is the world of Pandora. Yeah. Which is, is really cool. Yeah. Um, especially if you go at night because it's all lit up, but you are right in that. I don't know of any kid that has, any avatar toys or any avatar um, themed stuff in their room. I, I would argue that Bluey has more cultural impact than Probably. avatar. Okay. But okay. But you're not going to make a Bluey pinball. Okay. You shouldn't. Okay. You you shouldn't make a, a Bluey pinball. Shouldn't okay. we? Yes, we shouldn't. Uh, I, I want to put it to a poll. Bluey versus avatar. Okay. Avatar is a better one. <laughs> a- avatar still looks cool. Avatar still great. Um, and I do like that the huge plus, they have a lot of assets that they can integrate. And the one thing that we know that Jersey Jack is excellent at king at is the immersion factor of their games. Yeah. So you think about Hobbit, what did Hobbit have over Lord of the Rings? Definitely assets. Absolutely. Yeah. You, you had the feeling that you were actually in the movie yeah. wizard of Oz, same thing. Uh, yep. and you have guns and roses again, the most uh, immersive experience in a pinball machine is the guns and roses machine. Pro- yeah. You feel like you're at a concert. Yeah. And, and so, so this is actually, I would argue this is still a great theme for pinball. Okay. It's it. I wouldn't put it as the most impressive theme because we've all talked about the wish lists, and I, I guarantee the wish list that be, you know people always talk about. Okay, the Dad Rock ones. Okay, let's do that. Okay, let's do Harry Potter. Let's do that. Let's do you know uh, other things, movies. Yeah. Uh, you know, top movies. So a lot of people didn't really have Avatar as their list, yeah. but. What is the downside of doing an avatar? What's the downside? I think so. I think it lands in that category of like Godzilla and even okay. kind of X Men. It's it's more of a it's maybe a meh theme, but it has plenty of room to awe if the play field's done right or the right. And so I, I think there there's a lot of wiggle room there, and I think we're going to start seeing more of this. So this isn't like my understanding. This isn't Avatar specifically on the movies. Mm-hmm. It's just kind of an own standalone game, the Battle at Pandora, which is similar to like Godzilla. Mm-hmm. And we're starting to see more and more and more of this, where they're making their own storylines for these pinball machines instead of trying to follow like 
take Star Trek, for example, it kind of, the missions were solely based on movie scenes from the three movies or the two movies. So yeah, I just, I think overall, I don't know. We'll see this next week. It's next Thursday Mm -hmm. and we might even get our hands on it even, even just as soon, right? Maybe. Maybe. So, so we'll, we'll keep you in the loop on that one. But so overall, it sounds like you, you think it's a decent theme and kind of let's wait and see what the, because we've seen like what three or four shots of the play field between the flippers, the yeah. uh, the the weird like through the play field looking thing in the middle, the sinkhole, yeah, the sinkhole, yeah. and then uh, what else was there? Uh, the the locks, yeah, the play field, and it did, but it did look like okay, maybe I'm wrong, but on the quick teaser they did today, did it look like a like a clear play field with an under play field? I think so. That? Yeah, yeah, that, that's, that's what, what it looked like to me. Yeah. So that that could be really cool yeah it could because with the nice thing about play fields is for the most part look at any play field and if you take a pizza and slap it on the center of uh of a a play field yeah that whole area typically is empty yeah and it has art it has inserts it has stuff like that but if you leverage that and make it clear and do almost like a you know a crawl under but, uh, like an underplay field experience that could be really interesting i agree and that's total speculation but that's what it seemed like to me right yep all right let's talk about something we have seen so okay. x-men is officially revealed so this, it's it's x-men but are they calling it days of futures past it's just called x-men right? uncanny x-men uncanny, uncanny x-men, X-Men. okay mm-hmm. so uncanny x-men has now revealed we know f- so Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna give this preference before we get going on this. Scott, someone told us a week or two ago about the offset flippers. Right. And or, or it, hinted at it. Or hinted at it, yes. I, I don't know. So I've actually been kind of in a panic for this release. And I mean that's not the right word, but like really the last time offset flippers have been done was probably Gold Wings back in 86. That's before I was born. Mm-hmm. Um so it's one of those things where it's like it hasn't been done in 40 years. So mm-hmm. or almost 40 years. Was it a good concept back then? Is it a good concept now? So it's it's like, well, crap. Like, is this like we're just throwing crap at the, throwing pickles at the wall to see what slides down? I don't know. So I was really concerned about seeing this reveal today. Uh, just because like I had no clue what we were gonna see. And so I don't know. How were you feeling going into it, Scott? And I'm a little kind of distracted by sliding pickles on the wall. I'm trying to figure that out. <laughs> trying to think um, it's Billy Madison. You remember when they're doing the pickle races? <laughs> okay. Was that? Yeah. Yeah. I, I was just thinking of Steve Buscemi where he calls and apologizes and he's like, oh, well, thanks. <laughs> he crosses yeah, he takes his name off, off the people that I'm going to kill. Yeah. Um, okay. The, when I heard offset flippers, what I, and I envisioned was, flippers that weren't aligned yeah so like okay. a, f- a flipper that would be you know and I, I'm, I'm doing my hands but not like you know more like this yeah as one's higher to, than the other yeah. right so the right side like an inch higher than the other which i thought would be a horrible idea well they did it with super mario brothers it yeah, wasn't too it, far it, off but then again, yeah, you need to have outlines and it's either. a horrible lane it's a horrible game that's why people <laughs> only want it for the theme it's terrible it's not that terrible i would own a super mario brothers yeah you don't the want chance. five bucks Okay. Okay. Maybe yeah. a little bit more, but still. Okay. Okay. Um, but okay. Guess what? Have what? you looked closely at um at Rush? Uh, not lately. But I think okay. we've had this discussion about it. Right. If you if you actually look at it, the the fl- the shots are mainly to the right of center, and the flippers are left of center. Yeah. And so it is already positioned to the side. If you so if you look at X-Men, um really it's almost like a smaller play field that has some extra stuff. You can really box this out and almost make a standard type play field. Yeah. Yes, he is he has shortened it a little bit because if you look at where the flippers typically are, they're up a few centimeters. Yeah. And so that does make a difference. However, it looks it looked good. Yes, it like looks I, real good. It looked really good. And 
I was, I was concerned because you never know what someone's going to do with their sophomore release. Yeah. And you look at now, I, I always said what Jack did with the home version of Jurassic park was impressive. Yeah. Considering a small budget, it wasn't the same full featured as the cornerstone never was intended to be. Yeah. But it, it's fun. It's a fun game. Yeah. Very safe. It's a safe game. It's a fun game. Um, with Foo Fighters, took some risks, kind of borrowed some elements uh, that worked in other games, m- meshed them together, made his own version of it, and Foo Fighters is a solid game. Yeah, I own it. I, I enjoy it. It's a good game. It's a solid game. Yeah. And it would have been safer for him to go with a standard approach. Yeah. The fact that he felt, you know, Jack's always said, we want to make pinball, bring, you know, make pinball weird again, right? Yeah. B- bring back the, uh, the bring odd back stuff. back the 80s, apparently. Right. So I look at this and I'm thinking, dang, this looks a lot of fun. Yes. It really does. Like when I first saw it, I'm like, huh, I'm trying to figure that out. And especially the entrance to the danger room, the danger room almost seems like an upper play field that is hidden away in the lower left corner. So it's yep. almost a disguised upper play field. That's what I was thinking too. Yep. So so when I see this, it makes me think that Goldwings had a baby with Radical. Between yep. the ball pass like Radical and that that lower bottom like Goldwings, you're doing interesting stuff, just mm-hmm. zipping around the play field. Some of these shots, I, it, it, I had to watch this multiple times just to be like, what happened there? Wait, yep. rewind it 10 seconds. I still don't understand that. Rewind it 10 seconds. Mm-hmm. I, I went from like anxiety, panic, whatever it is, whatever you want to be like, here, here's my, here's my problem. Like pinball has been on, I don't want to say on like a downhill slope. Maybe it has been, it has been for a couple of years now. Let's be honest. Um, things have felt a little stale. Mm-hmm. And so when you hear a risk being taken, where it's offset flippers, it's not very traditional what they're doing. You're messing with the Italian bottom, which really hasn't been done in the last 40 years. It makes you're like, well, crap. Like, are we just are we just trying stuff now? Mm-hmm. And then this comes out, and you're like, oh, this feels new and unique, but yet familiar because it it mm-hmm. takes some elements from games that do well, that do great. And so, I just I want to flip this game. This game looks so insanely cool to play, and it just. The one thing is, is I don't know. I I don't. I, I'm jumping all over the place because I'm like I'm thinking of the Sentinel head, and I'm like, the Sentinel head's really cool, and and it's ball pass behind the head instead of just. I thought it was like you bash the head, and then like mm-hmm. it's just space behind the head, right? Kind of like on Circus Voltaire, which has been, yeah, been mentioned back and forth with this. But there's actual ball pass around the head, like it goes up to ramps and it goes places instead of just like you're hitting a head and then there might be something back there. No, there is actual purpose to it. So there is just this is so unique and so different. I think people I, I, we've had nothing but positive. So we we posted this on all the sh- socials today, mm-hmm. and I've had a hard time keeping up. Right. We have been bombarded yeah, with yeah, comments. I, I was messages. working, so I'm glad you were able to do it. But it, it, yeah. It, it was interesting seeing, you know, when I had breaks and I could look at it, seeing how how actually this this sparked more interaction than any other time that we posted saying, what do you think of this? Yeah. Yep. And all the all the reactions are pretty much the same. It was X-Men's okay. Like it's mm-hmm. it's something we recognize, but it's not a theme mm-hmm. we're dying for. Um you zombie arts, awesome art, mm-hmm. but we've kind of seen it before. So what are we getting from Jack Danger? And everyone has just been like, holy crap, mm-hmm. this looks absolutely insane to play. The concern is, is like if you've ever played Gold Wings, it'll kick your butt. Right. The, the, the offset flippers are, can be a little mean. It and, doesn't and, look like a simple game. But you know what? You can have a simple, uh, a uh, an Italian bottom layout that's super mean too. I can think of a few board games that, that qualify. Yeah. So... I don't know. I want to. I want to play this game. I can't wait for Expo. I like yeah. Pinball Expo. Let's, let's do this. Let's. Is it October already? Can we go? Yeah. Like now. Yeah. It, it it looks great. The. You know, it's uh, as we said. I think the theme qualifies in the recognizable but solidly B theme. 
Yes. Like I, it is definitely better than Venom. Okay. Which, which is funny because like X-Men was considered like a top tier license at one point in time. Right. I mean, it's, it's kind of what helped propel Marvel into the movie era. Like, yeah, they say Blade is what started it, but then like the X-Men movies came right out after. No, it, and, it, it was, it was the X-Men movies and Spider-Man. Yep. Like the, like X, you know, like the T- Tobey Maguire, Spider-Man and the Brian Singer X-Men movies that showed, Hey, the technology is here. Like we can make a really good version of a comic book movie. Yep. And really the Avengers were never considered as popular as the X-Men. It was the X-Men all the way, but because they sold the X-Men rights for actually cheap to yep. uh, Fox and they basically said, well, let's do the Avengers then. And that, and that was pretty much what they did. Now they made the Avengers, the A team after like all their, all their stories. But really the X-Men is, it, it's still a great theme, but if, if you know what I mean by saying it's a solidly B theme, I'm just saying that it is recognizable. Okay. A themes. What are A themes? Harry Potter. A theme. Harry Potter. Yeah. Yep. Harry Potter. Star A-theme. Wars. Star Wars. A theme. Yep. Yep. Um, you know, Godzilla is a C theme. I've said it. Godzilla is a C theme. J- Jurassic and, and Park people need a B theme. People need to realize, like, we're not like ranking these themes. We're no, just going no. based off of like marketability. If you, took the, if you took, yeah, the top twenty-five franchises of all time, Harry Potter's up there, Star Wars is up there, Pokemon's yeah. up there. I mean, yeah, some of these might Hello Kitty's up there. Yeah, that might not translate great to pinball. But what we're saying is, is if you go based off of the money and the gross profit, right. th- there is obviously themes that make more money than others. Yeah, and, and Marvel's so, so, up there. So that's all I'm saying is that from from the X Men standpoint, it's it's a little you know, it's a smaller, it caters to a smaller audience. Yeah. Um, that now that being said, integrating this type of story and these shots, this is, I, this goes in the face of, you know, back on the good old head to head days with Ryan and Marty. I still remember something that Marty said is that everybody talks about, uh, I want different, I want different, but not that. Yeah. But not he, that. He, yeah. he always said that. Right. I would say this qualifies as I want different. I want different. I want that. Yeah. Cause it looks really good. Yeah. It looks, yeah. yeah. What do you well, think about the entrance to the, to the, the danger room? Cause that seems quite interesting. So it's, I think it's very interesting. So if, if you're following along with us, you can go to sternpinball.com and look at the new X-Men game there. Um, but the way to get into uh, th- so the danger room, what Scott's talking about is that left of center. It's that we're calling it kind of like a mini play field, but it's just that little mini flipper on the left side. Okay. It's, it's, it's like where the balloon shot is in a uh, wizard of Oz. Yes. And it's similar to kind of the Foo Fighters upper play field. You've got mm-hmm. a spinner shot and you've got a ramp out, uh, that ramp out brings you right to your, to, to the left flipper with what's called cerebro ball lock, which is, I assume, like a ma- magnetic ball lock, which stops it right above the flipper to give you some time to breathe. And mm-hmm. then it's going to drop it to your flipper so you can shoot. But to, to get into the danger room, if I remember correctly, it's on this right side, kind of over where the ball, uh, the the shooter lane is. You've got to shoot um, kind of up into this area around that pop bumper. Kind of The pop bumper is in the same place as it is on Godzilla, similarly, or Jaws. Um, so you're shooting that and it drops you down into this, this danger room. My question is, is it, wor- so it well, says no, it's no, high no, risk. Okay. So how I saw it is this is a shot that you shoot. This seems like the Katana shot to me, like a okay. similar version. Yes. Yep. Like it seems like you shoot left to go over the storm, uh, decal. There's yes. a quick, um, uh, hyper flex ramp ball path that takes you across the play field and then drops you down. So you're hitting the shot with velocity. Oh, you're correct. Yes. I, yes. I know what you're talking about. Now. Yeah. So it hits your shot with velocity and therefore there is enough momentum to swing it around below the flipper, like the, uh, the hyper loop shot or, you know, the, 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 um, whatever that, the hyperdrive shot in yeah. star Wars, you know, yeah. the hyperspace one. 
but it brings you with velocity and it takes you up and then drops you onto the left flipper. Yeah. Now there's danger because you go into that left flipper and if you do not shoot out of there, you're drained. Yep. Like that's the only, and, and there's only one flipper there. There's not two. Yeah. And it's, it's a mini flipper too. Jack has, has marketed it as high risk, high reward. So I wonder, is that area like, here's the problem. So if it is a turn, if you put on your tournament cap, right. If this is really high points, what's not stopping you from just milking that area. But then again, if it really is as high risk as he's saying, you might not want to be in that area. Well, isn't yeah. that the point of of the coder though? The yeah. like the, the secret sauce of the coder is to be able to find okay, um where Which is Wayson, Wayson Wei Chang. Chang. Yeah, so. Wei and Chang. Yeah, and, and what else has Wayson done? Uh was it WWE and oh, we looked this up before, crap. We did. But it, yeah, that's why I asked you cuz I forgot. <laughs> Son of a gun. I got put on the spot. Well, I I shouldn't come back later for it. Just yeah. Hold please, hold please. Uh, WWE. Let me. I'm. I'm. I'm pin citing this right now. We, yes. We're doing this live. We'll do it live. Live, baby. Um. Uh, Wayson Chang. So yeah. So Lonnie Rop, Wayson Chang. So Wayson did the the software on Jurassic Park Home Edition. Right. He did Heavy Metal, mm-hmm. Monsters Pro. So the Monster stuff. He worked on Deadpool. Um. Yeah. So I mean, these are solid games. I I think so. It looks like Wayson works. In tandem, so it looks like probably Home Edition was his first, which that's a solid, solid code set. I mean, it's mm-hmm. it's a little more bare, but then again, it's a Home Edition, so like you can't really expect much from it. Yeah, same with Heavy Metal. It's mm-hmm. it's, but um, and and Monsters was more of Dwight. So okay, I'm wondering if Wayson's getting Monsters is okay. I I've always said I give Monsters a pass because yeah. we kept saying, hey, the games are too hard, and they're like, okay, here's this, and they're like. Again, this is the hey, we want different, but not that. Uh, yeah, the the rules were a little too stripped down. So you know, it's the Goldilocks zone, trying to find the sweet spot. Yep, yep. <laughs> I saw a joke the other day where you know, the baby bear was mm-hmm. asking, you know, daddy bear's like, someone's been in my bed, and mommy's like, someone's been in my bed, and the baby bear's like, how long have you two been sleeping in separate beds? Yeah, <laughs> and it's like this whole like touching. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, yeah, let's yeah. move on. Yeah, okay. Awkward. Uh, uh, so, okay. So Wei and Chang's on code. Okay. Um, here's, here's the thing. Okay. What's the first couple things that popped out to you when you started watching this trailer besides like, it's hard to keep up. Uh, it just looked like there's a lot of ball movement. He makes it look really smooth. Yes. However, smooth. it, it still looks a little bit like a breakfast if you're not nailing the shots. Yeah. And, and that's, that's kind of how Deadpool is too. Well, like and Dead, the other thing too, yeah. Deadpool's really hard if you don't nail those shots. Yeah. The first thing that popped out to me was like the literal sentinel between the head and the hands. It looks good. Yeah. And it looks way good. I find it interesting that like the sentinel like literally gives you the finger to yeah. stop the ball. Uh, I think it's really cool that the hand comes down and smashes the wire form, the actual wire form. Does like, it do that on the pro as well? No. The, and the hands aren't really like. The, the, so the hands don't articulate on the pro, right? And I don't even think they're in it on the pro. Like, no, I know, I, so the I'm right looking, one is the right one. The left is, one, left one looks like a. It's like an art thing with the with a right. beacon. Yeah. yeah. So, um, someone can point out. I think this is all ramps. There's no orbits, and I think they're right. Okay. I don't fully understand the uh, the beast layer. Um, the very like target captive ball. Yeah. Very target captive ball thing. I don't, do you just hit the target below and it becomes more like, again, this is, I mean, this is the magical world of pinball where you're, you're borrowing and integrating from other people. Right. Yeah. And, and so this is where you have, it looks a little bit like a repurposing of venom. Yeah. Kind of, huh? Yeah. I, where, I was kind of thinking the same thing. Yeah. Where venom has the carnage target. And he's going back to, I can't remember what the sanctuary shot is, but this is almost using those, uh, those hyper, um, oh, that, the ball, the hyper ball feeds that are on the wire forms. Yeah. But he's using it in a different way where you're shooting up to it and then hitting the very target. Yeah. So the one thing that really stuck out to me too, is that crazy eight ramp, which I don't think is on the pro. 
but it yeah. is on the premium LE mm -hmm. where you shoot it and it curves around, but then it goes through another ramp mm -hmm. and curves back around. That's insane. That's yeah. cool. That's making the ball doing interesting things. Right. Okay. There's one thing that bugs me and maybe it's just okay. me. Like, I didn't do the research. Okay. I've done some research. Uh, okay. I'm not going to lie. This last weekend I had COVID and we were already planning on going camping. So my wife, we already had the trailer up the mountain and everything. So my wife's like, well, why don't you just stay home away from the rest of us and we'll go camping. And I was like, sure. So I had a lot of time on my hands this weekend. Uh, I streamed. I I read the this comic, Days of Futures Past, ep issue 141 and 142. I watched like the first season of X-Men, the animated series. I watched the movie Days of Futures Past. So I feel a little rehearsed on this. Okay. Okay. Back left. Wolverine's like in this like almost like ninja pose. And mm -hmm. there's like, this is the fastball special. Isn't the fastball special like when Colossus throws him, isn't it more like a Superman pose with his arms out in front of him and his legs behind him kind of thing? Yeah. Yeah, it, it is. He, he. I know it's stupid. I know it's something I'm like, but I'm just okay. like, is uh, it the fastball special though? Okay. Is it? No, but could you imagine having Wolverine with his arms, his <laughs> outstretched arms and claws and like flying like Superman? True. Could true. Like, there's no way. Like that is a more typical wolverine pose right there but even like in the stern presents like the five minute thing like jack's like this is the fastball special and i was like is it though but yeah you know, maybe <laughs> maybe they're just doing a, a gymnastics pose yeah i know it's really stupid i know people people i can hear the eye rolling through the mic and through the headphones i apologize mm -hmm. i just i wanted to if that's your one negative you take from all this like honestly you're you're knocking it out of the park right i uh, you know i I just looked at that and I said, ah, that's pretty much what Wolver what pose Wolverine is in. And actually, it okay, actually, do you know what it looks more like? It looks more like a saber tooth pose. It kind of does. Mm -hmm. I know. Listen to our nerds hanging out. Uh, we <laughs> Careful, have a pin, Scott. Your nerd we have a pinball showing. podcast. Okay. Uh, our nerd is on full display. We oh made our goodness. own shirts and we're wearing our own merchandise. I mean, come on. It's, I, and you know what? I am very happy and comfortable. In my yeah, own merchandise. I'm, I'm comfortable nice. in my own merchandise. Yes. <laughs> okay. F final. Okay. I mean, obviously it's day one. We haven't played this. Yeah. We, yeah. All we have is their little quick reveal and we keep watching it, trying to figure out more on it. Yeah. Let's, let's do some breakdowns. What do you think of gameplay just based off of what you've seen? Interested. Yeah, that, that's here. what I think. I think it looks interested. Now, if you're going to have a knock on John Wick, John Wick is very much I've seen, maybe not this before, but I've seen a version of this before. And, yeah. and this was my thought on Stranger Things. Like, I have Attack from Mars. And I thought, well, I could get a Stranger Things. And I've, I've been offered a Stranger Things a few times, like really nice versions of Stranger Things. Yeah. And I've always passed because I thought, well, I still have Attack from Mars has a very similar feel. I, I don't know. Anytime you buy a game, you have to swap out a game. And I never found a game that I thought this is different enough. Yeah. So when I went from Spider-Man to Iron Man to Deadpool, that was my progression there. And I, I don't okay. really plan on swapping Deadpool out anytime soon because I still like it. This is a game that has a potential of feeling like a Deadpool or swapping out a Deadpool because it looks tough. It has some interesting shots with velocity, but it also is taking it to a next level. I agree. As far, as far as gameplay for me, I'm not sold on, like I'm not buying just yet. I've got to get my hands on this game. I'm I want, excited I want to for play it. Absolutely. I want to play it. I'm definitely in the camp of like, I'm excited to play yep. with John wick. Yeah, like I don't mind playing it. Was fun. It. It, was, it, it, it was was fun. fun. But it, even it was from first safe. impressions, I was like, yeah, like, yeah, like I'll I'll play it. Right. This I want to play. Like if I, I see a lineup mm -hmm. I'm and I see this in the lineup, I'm going straight to it because I want to mm -hmm. see how this plays. And I think that's the thing too, is a lot of people are like, I haven't seen anything like this in the last 40 years. Right. So I want to know how this plays. Mm -hmm. And I love that. Okay. So gameplay, obviously, we're both excited, maybe not yep. sold on buying, but Definitely want to play. Okay, okay, okay but I, I, I will point out I'm interested. Like, oh, okay. Th there are a lot of, like, I'm interested, but I, I still am under the camp. Play a game before you buy it. it definitely, same. Because I, I, I bought Shrek, sight unseen, played it, and I, I immediately unboxed it and, and played it, and I thought, 
I have made a huge mistake because yeah. <laughs> I it was like, this wasn't, it wasn't fun from like the first plunge. Okay. Artwork zombie Yeti. How you feeling about it? Uh, come on. I, th this looks uh, now when, um, when George Gomez talks about this is a good throwback. So I've talked about when I read comic books, the four artists that, that um, really were the huge ones back then. There was Todd McFarlane. Yeah. Todd McFarlane did Spawn. Also did uh, Venom, really. He's the one who came up with the storyline. And Spider-Man, okay? You have Jim Lee, who did, who still has some of the best uh, anatomic versions. I and mean, they look like they're like Greek gods and goddesses. They're, yeah. It's great. Wills Portacio has a little more stylistic feel and Rob Liefeld. So those are the one, those are the superstars. If you want to know what I'm talking about, go check those guys out. Okay. Okay. This feels like a Jim Lee type. And if you want to pick one style to emulate, you want to pick Jim Lee. So, so look at it. This looks great. Uh, hands down. No, no, no questions asked. This looks perfect for this theme. Here's what I'm going to say about this. Okay. I, so Zombie Yeti, we've talked about this on our show before. Like he's been on here and yep. like, a, and he said like Marvel requests him. Like the, there is no if, ands, or buts. They will wait mm -hmm. to get him. Yeah. And so he is obviously doing justice to the source material, right? Yep. As I go back through, so just... Just in Marvel stuff alone, we're we're talking Deadpool, we're talking Avengers: Infinity Quest, we're talking Venom. Um, what else has has Zombie Yeti done? Uh, well, okay, so so rule those off again. Sorry, I thought I heard my oh, I, my, I think my cat was trying to attack my <laughs> stuff. Okay, so Venom, Avengers: Infinity Quest, and Deadpool. Is there another one he's done? I want, I feel like there's more that he's done. I could be wrong. I uh -huh. apologize. We're we're gonna go with that right now. Okay. Okay. So at least those, three three Marvel themes, right? Yeah, three Marvel three. themes. Right. You could kind of lump in Ninja Turtles, even though it was based off the, the animated series. Sure. sure. But it was a comic book, right? Okay. So we've got four solid comic book themes. Mm -hmm. And now we have X-Men. The thing that separates this, okay. If you go and look at all those other ones, mm -hmm. Zombie Eddie has this very much. It's almost like with Deadpool. I'm gonna take that as a great example. It's, sure. If you look at that play field. It's almost like a movie poster. Mm -hmm. You've got, you've got the 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 fan of people in the movie, aka the game. Yep. And, and then you've got little snippets here and there of, of little shots from the movie or from the game. Oh, he did Guardians of the Galaxy, didn't he? No, he, that was Christopher Franchi. Oh, oh, that's right. Sorry. So, oh. so it's very movie esque, right? Yeah. And I feel like that's how it's been kind of like with Venom. Venom was a little more segmented, a little bit, and and. Uh, Avengers Infinity Quest, you look at that play field, it, it's 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 almost like there's lanes. It's the best way to describe it because right. each shot is like one's Thor and one's right. Black. Yeah. It's very lanes. The thing about this, the thing that I love about X-Men that he's done, it is like he literally took the comic book, opened mm -hmm. the pages, and slapped it down on the play field. Almost like you're layering comic book over comic book. Yep. And so you're seeing these different scenes and the story being illustrated on the play field. Yep. And out of everything he's done comic book wise, I think this is some of his best work. Like we can critique like shading and da 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 da. I'm not an artist. I'm not gonna go, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do that with you. But seriously, go back and look at his other stuff when it, with Marvel. This is literally taking you into the comic books. Yep. And I think it just was done perfectly. Yeah. I don't know what are your thoughts? Yeah, and, and Chris, you know I love you. They uh, just thinking about Guardians of the Galaxy with just another comic book theme. Um, obviously, that's a different style. Like, uh, so every artist tends to have their own style. So as we talked with uh, Franchi, I did Beatles, did Guardians of the Galaxy, and it when you Black have that force, yeah, yeah, when you have that, he has definitely more of a picture style. Uh, you know, approach. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you have, uh, and, and I would argue Michael Bernard with, uh, you know, with Jaws and with Rush, it's a different style. 
Okay. And it's it, with, with rush, it was like finding all the Easter eggs from all the super, super rush fans. And when you yep. have, you know, jaws, he's painting that picture and the, the picture of having the, uh, you know, the water, it's different. You are a hundred percent right on being able to say, let's just say I took my comic books and I cut up some pieces of the different comic books and then put them on the play field, laid them down. This is exactly what it is. What now what's the casualty of that? The casualty and the criticism that people feel with zombie Yeti stuff is it feels very busy and it does. Yeah. This one definitely so, does. This one definitely is the busiest. Yes. So if that is a, if that is a distraction, I can understand that. I would argue it works really well for this theme. Yes. It's a it's a busy art on a busy game. Yeah. And it works. Yep. I agree. We can't really talk about code. We haven't seen much about that. And honestly, the rule, rule yep. court card's kind of weird and barren, and we don't fully understand what's going on. And we so couldn't figure out how to start a mode. <laughs> yeah. How do, how do you start a mode on this? I'm sure um, they'll fix that. I'm sure they'll fix that. I, 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 we didn't really talk about game. This, I guess, toys and mechs is separate. What do you think about toys and mechs? Re, it, it's nice. This is a new take on just a second. I'm going to cough. <coughs> this is a new take on the bash toy, right? And this is bash toy 2.0 where yeah. it comes out, but you have the, the, you know, the mouth opening, which is, which has been done similarly, you know, with the group mouth, but having kind of that kick back when the mouth opens, that's a new twist. And I do like that. Um, on the side with the with the broken ramp, very similar to Godzilla in that it has a a ramp that gets disconnected yeah. with action. Now, Jack Jack personally has done this in a different way with the home edition with the jump ramp. You know, so so he's he's played with these states of change, and I do like that situation. Um, I don't really understand the very target much. I and mean, is it just for for looking cool? Is there anything else associated with that? So I'm not I'm not really sure what to say about that one. Um the hand the hand like okay, I'm all about having a way of bringing you into the game. Yeah. The hand looks really cool. Yep. I agree. And, and you know, I love the, I love the motion on uh, the thing that I like uh, most about, um, Avengers infinity quest are the ball paths and the movement, the long trajectories of the ball moving around. Yeah. This has that, uh, like even more so. Yep. So him to be able to have this rat's nest of, ball paths and having them intersect and incorporate that. Mm, okay. I, I don't want this to sound bad. I, I want this to sound very complimentary. I see elements of Deadpool in here. I see elements of Avengers infinity quest. Yeah. I see elements of Foo fighters in here mm -hmm. and I see elements of, you know, I, I would say a Borg style bash toy that's taken to a different level. Yeah. Okay. I don't think that's offensive at all either. I, I think would say imitation is the sincerest form of flattery. And especially if you can bring a new twist that elevates, and yeah. this seems to have elevated on every level on first glance. Yep. I agree. So, and I, I'm, I'm there with you when I, when I saw it first, honestly, I think I think you could have got away with not having the head go up and out, up and down from the play field if there's not much uh, state change to it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it's still a bash toy, even though it's down. Um, I think on the pro, you'll be happy that the, the head's stagnant. It still kicks back, but you're not getting that up and down motion out of the play field. Right. Um, I really think the hands are cool. I think if you're in the market for this, I think you're just as happy with the pro as you are a premium. Um, but there are some, you are taking. You're getting ninety percent of the gameplay out of the pro, mm -hmm. and there's some, but that extra ten percent is really cool, and, um, and, and that's what it should be. Yeah, like it should be that that extra ten percent. Yeah, 
I, it's it's interesting. The the bat. Uh, I'm trying to figure out. It looks like you still go around the sentinel head. It doesn't. Yes. It's not like it passes over it. Correct. So the way it works is, if you yeah. shoot to the left, it actually comes back around the back of his head and goes yeah. up this ramp down to the right. If you shoot to the right, it goes around the left and to, like kind of up through these paths on the left. Yeah. So there, there's no orbit or anything like that. It actually leads to more ramps. That's why I'm like, I, I, Joel Engelberth was it's like, no I think fear, it's just ram, no ramps. fear. And I'm like, yeah. yeah, it's 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 a lot of ramps. It's can we get more ramps? Yeah. <laughs> but you know when like Spooky like teased like 17 ramps like right. five years ago on what was like TNA or whatever. Right. That's what's coming out. 17 ramps. I I felt like Jack took that to heart. He's like, you guys are joking about that, but I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do we it can one do, day. We can do 18. We have the technology. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no, seriously. Okay. Overall, I think I think this is a hit. I think it, people okay, are it has a potential, it. right? Because yes, everything is guarded with we're not sure how it plays, but it has potential. We're hearing it selling better on day one than the la outside of Jaws. The right. last couple of releases, it's doing it's doing fairly well. So right. Well, Foo Fighters did really well too. I mean, to Jack's credit, Foo Fighters was, I mean, for his initial effort, and he had a he had a I, I would say another solid B theme. Yeah. But it it really does. Can you believe Foo Fighters was almost fifteen months ago? Yeah. Sixteen months ago. Yeah. Crazy. Yeah, that's wild. Yeah. But I I I would argue this. Uh, I was cautiously, I, I was concerned when they just said X Men because we have an X Men, right? Yeah, you know, it, yep. it, like all these themes that that it seems like Pinball is recycling some themes. X Men has come out before, um, Avatar has come out before. You know, Guns yeah. N' Roses has come out before, and wait, uh, Godzilla has come out before. Come out before. Yeah. yeah, so finding different ways of doing an old story, and you know Go, what, the, Golden Eye. James Bond's come out before. Right. But finding a way of in incorporating the Magneto stuff too without making it feel reductive was was really cool. I agree. So over overall, we want to play. Yeah. Okay, before we shut this down, okay. I want to do a quick review. I, I teased this like a week or two ago. I got the new pin snake. Uh, I got it. So I had nothing to do this weekend. So I decided to clean pinball machines because you, you decided know. to pull out your snake and start <laughs> going around the play field. Exactly. So I went to the hardest one I figured would be to clean would be World Cup soccer, right? Yep. You got mm -hmm. long orbits. You've got ramps stacked on top of each other. And like if, if I'm going to be testing one, it's this one. So um, I started to get in there. The first I did the left orbit first. Um, it reaches almost all the way to the pops. It's shy, maybe an inch or two. Mm -hmm. um, okay, first off, if you haven't seen the pin snake, please go to pinsnake.com. I think it's pinsnake.com. Just Google pin snake. I promise you, it's going to pop up. Okay, I'm going like, to. The, right. the dude is actually not taking any more orders right at the moment because he's trying to build up a supply it is for pin, Pinball Expo. It, pinsnake.com, yes. Yes. Um, so you can go there and you can order them, but you're not going to get them for like a month and a half because he's, he's trying to stockpile to, to take them to X. Mm -hmm. Um, anywho. So I took it around the world cup play, uh, play field. If you haven't seen this, it's almost like those fidget toys, mm -hmm. the, the little, the ones you disconnect and put back together. Yeah. Uh, it, it literally has a snake head on it, but it's got Velcro on the sides and on the bottom. So you take your, your rag, it comes with a special rag and, uh, it's just like a, a, where are they no no lint rag dust free i can't remember what you call them it's, hey, it's a microfiber it's a microfiber. microfiber thank you yes good cramony people it, it's it's 10 15 at night and i've been up since five it's it's been mm -hmm. a long day and i've had to deal with idiots and and it's been a big idiot day hey so I, i'm glad i'm sitting on a pinball podcast talking about the thing i love because you're talking it makes, you're, you're talking to one of the idiots you're dealing with no 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 you're not even close <laughs> <All right>. no <laughs> anywho so the pin snake Yep. So I, it was really cool because here's the thing. I don't mind cleaning until you get to the part where you, it's like, well, I can't reach in there and I don't want to tear off ramps to clean and six I, inches. You always, you always scrape orbit. your finger, like your knuckles. I, every time I yeah. try to clean back there, I always come back with bloody knuckles. Yeah. And so you're always like, well, this will do enough. Like I've got the ball pass out of the main way, but like 
100 plays later, the ball pass are back and it's it's getting dirty again because you weren't able to get everything. Mm-hmm. And so I always dread getting in behind everything. Um, so I was I'm re- I was really excited for this. And so I, I get it in and I start cleaning World Cup soccer. And I said, yeah, I was short a little bit, but the, even though I was a little bit short, I could still reach with my bare hands. So it wasn't a big deal. I was able to get through the pop bumps area. Mm-hmm. Um, it handled the ramps great. I was nervous that there wouldn't be enough pressure to push down onto the play field to clean it. Mm-hmm. it wasn't a problem. It, it cleaned those spots without me having to, because like, you know, when you're cleaning with a rag, you want to apply pressure down so you're getting the grub off. Mm-hmm. It did it well. I'm, did you dust or did you like apply Novus? I did. Uh, I did Novus one. I did not Good. do Novus two. I just so did, did this one. one. That one right there. So yep. if you're looking on YouTube right now, uh, we ju- it's Scott a, it's just the blue Novus, the yeah. blue Novus, not the red Novus, and definitely not the green Novus. I don't know yeah. if I've ever used green Novus in my you, life. You should never me. use the green Novus. Yeah, I don't know why they make the stuff like red speak because, because it's enough. not definitely it's not just pinball specific. Yes, <laughs> it's for so, autos, boats, planes, motorcycles, and most plastic services. Exactly, slash pinball. Yeah. So I went through the whole play field. I, I went as if I could not touch. I tried to do everything with the snake. Mm-hmm. Um, so obviously there's, there's a couple limitations if you're going up a ramp. So like in world cup soccer, the, the ramp on the right goes underneath, uh, a plastic form. And so it's kind of hard to get in there with a the hand. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're going up a ramp, obviously the snake stays very parallel. It doesn't flex up and down, right. it flex left to right, but it won't go up and down. So like, there's a little bit of that, but honestly, that's fine with me because if you had like flex up and down, you then couldn't, you couldn't put pressure. Yeah, you couldn't put pressure, and as soon as you did, it would, it would pop up. Mm-hmm. So, like that's not—it's a pro and a con. Like I don't know how you'd fix that problem, but it's more of a pro because I don't have to push down. Uh, really, it hit every spot. I think if you're looking, this is this—I want to say it's thirty-five bucks. Mm-hmm. Is it only thirty-five bucks? Yeah, it's not it's, expensive. It's, it's thirty-five bucks and maybe a little bit of shipping. It's it is the must-have tool for your kit. It. If you don't like clean, cleaning your pinball machine, it's going to make it so much easier. No one likes cleaning their pinball machines. They don't. And this did, unless you're Nick Lane. <laughs> but it did fantastic. I give yeah. it a nine out of ten. Like I said, there's some some limitations, but overall, for what you get from it, it's the limitations aren't really there. You know what I'm saying? Like, I can't clean a 180 wrapped. Okay, well, I'm going to have to just get in there and do it anyway. You know what I'm saying? Go both sides. So yeah. yeah, so it's 35 bucks and a pin snake towel three pack is 10 bucks. So, and that would be my recommendation. Like, I wish I would have got the three pack towel with it. If you're going to buy the pin snake, because here's the thing, like the towel's great, but you're going to clean one of your pinball machines and be like, uh, yeah, I can flip this over and use it again. But if you're like me, you've got a collection of five or more, right? You're going to be it like, makes well, it fast. You mm-hmm. can clean it fast. They get black quick, like quick. It shocked me how clean and here's the thing too so the the actual rag goes onto the side of the snake Mm -hmm. as well just not the belly but on the side i didn't realize how much dirt i was getting on this i pulled it out i was like holy crap like yeah like obviously your ball makes contact with the walls right Mm -hmm. and so i don't know why but i was like it's nice that you're you're not just cleaning it's it's a good solid motion for everything right like you're not just you're kind of doing double the work and like half the effort Mm -hmm. right so if you don't have one of these, I highly recommend them. Obviously, they're on hold. The dude's selling it; he can't keep them in stock. Like mm-hmm. they're obviously a good product. If if you want to see like a, uh, an actual like usage, Carrie Hardy did like a little five minute video on it, right? And he's not even sponsored by it. And he was like, "I feel like I didn't be." Well, doing we're not even justice. sponsored by it either. Yeah, true. <laughs> For thirty five bucks, we were sponsored. Yeah, we. It was but sent as a demo. All. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was sent as a demo. I will give you that. But okay. Um. But yeah, it's like we're not getting paid to do this review. So there is that. So okay. yeah, check out Pin Snakes. All right. Um, and we are looking forward to Avatar to be able to talk more about it too. Uh, the Battle next of time. Pandora. Yeah. Uh, so it was fun to actually start talking about it now, just seeing our reveal, but yeah. definitely a lot more coming up. I'm I'm excited to see what they're bringing up because I have a feeling they have something special. So really quick question. We've only got like maybe five minutes. Not even okay. Because okay. I, I got to get going. Do you think, because the rumor is right now, 
So American Pinball was going to unveil Cuphead before Expo. But because now JJP's revealed something, uh, Stern's revealed something, Mm -hmm. Dutch Pinball's revealing Alice, they don't Mm want to get caught up in the... uh, Another Texas Pinball 5? Yeah. Yeah, but that was like seven, eight titles. Do you think it's wise for them to hold off? Yeah, they have to. I don't. I think... I think no, they no, need to no, reveal they, now and they need to have it at Expo so people can get hands okay. on it. If they had it available, yes. If they had okay. it available and ready, yes. Okay. But they they've always struggled with getting a game ready and playworthy and it's worse if you pre-reveal before you're ready and then people's first impression is just uh too hard to overcome. And because the, it's highly suspected it's Cuphead, that is you have to make your impression in the first five minutes. So it, if they are not ready and they're behind, which they typically have been, I would say this is not the time to reveal. Okay. You have two big ones coming at you. X-Men feels like it's going to be a big hit. Yeah, it's and a Avatar has a potential of being a really big hit. What was that? So it could be a juggernaut. It could, oh, ooh. Uh, <laughs> nice, uh, nice. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So Scott says don't. I say do. We'll see what okay. American does. All right. Yeah. But other than that, yeah, man, I, I'm i stoked. Like between X-Men and Avatar, yeah. Expo, Expo is going to be amazing. If you have – someone just messaged me today. All the JJP tickets are sold out for the tour. So yeah. uh, if you're going to Expo – yeah. Yeah, better. You know, okay. Seriously, go and still try out because the JJP. Okay, JJP's factory is fun. It's a great experience. We did the Stern factory. It is impressive just to see how the sausage is made. At least the the part of the sausage they'll show us because it really does give you a new appreciation for how hard it really is to make a pinball machine. Well, Ken gave us a private tour of JJP. It was yeah, amazing. Yeah, well, and we couldn't make it because we were doing the the, the charity. So that was very kind of Ken to do that. I agree. Yep. Well, if you want to get a hold of us, or you, actually first, if you want to buy our swag, because you've been looking at us for an right. hour now, and you're like, dang, those are some nice And you're thinking jerseys. you could make this look better, which is true. Yes. Or you want a pair of shoes. Hey, uh, I just got some shoes. I got the Vans. Uh, Silverballswag.com slash loser kid. Uh, what was the thing, the deal we made on like the last episode? If you show up in some loser kid swag, I don't know, maybe I'll have to go back and listen. Give you a high five, take a picture. We'll figure out what it was. Yeah, exactly. Um, that reminds me though, if you want a hat, you're taking pre-orders from the hats. It's pinned to the top of Facebook. Go there, submit a response. Um, I will be doing that at the end of like the 27th Mm -hmm. is the deadline because I have to get these in, get them ordered. We have the gold. Uh, we have the gold one. The, it's gold, baby. We also have. Uh, are you making any more of these? The these loser ones? Yeah. A- anything so, we've offered in the past besides the black, red, besides white. the OG. Yeah. Yeah, the OG we cannot get our hands on. But anything else, if you want it, we can get it. I have pictures. Okay. Yeah. So, if you want to get a hold of us, we are loser kid pinball podcast at gmail.com. You can get a hold of us on Facebook, Twitter, X, whatever. Instagram, threads, Twitch, YouTube, all at Loser Kid Pinball. We've made it easy, just all in a little bundle like that. Uh, I've totally lost track of what I was trying to say. Check us out on YouTube. Please subscribe, all that jazz. Um, Yeah, give us our last thoughts, Scott. Okay, and we may have more in-depth information on the games coming up here soon. Yes, maybe even as soon as next week. Maybe. 